Hello, everyone. We're the Krauss Marine Mammal Conservation Program. We're at the Anderson Cabot Center for Ocean Life at the New England Aquarium. The program started back in 1980 when Scott Krauss was doing some exploratory aerial surveys over the Bay of Fundy. And to his surprise, and really the surprise of the entire marine mammal community, found 24 North Atlantic right whales. Right whales were very rare at that point and hadn't been seen in the Bay of Fundy. Since that exciting discovery, the program has grown and ex evolved, exploring many other habitats from Florida, to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and to as far as ways Iceland. We've watched as the species increased and then declined and changed their habitat use many times over. The one constant over all these years has been our unwavering passion for this endangered species and our efforts to protect them. We're gonna walk you through a brief history of this program and what changes were occurring when each of us joined the team. We'll start off with Amy, who's been with the program the longest. Thanks, Philip. Hi, my name is Amy Knowlton, and I started on the project as a volunteer in 1983, before being hired full-time in 1988. When I first started, we did not have computers and all our images were collected in slide form. So a lot of our time was spent looking at slides over a light table to try and match sightings to the catalog, which we had just begun to curate. It was a ex really exciting time as so little was known about right whales and the aquarium's right whale program was in its infancy. It seemed that every day we, are, we or our colleagues were making new discoveries, including learning that right whales were migrating to the southeast U.S. coast to give birth, and also aggregating in other feeding areas in the northeast waters. Once we were able to integrate photographs from multiple organizations, we determined there were around 250 individuals. We were able to identify these individuals using natural markings on top of their heads called callosities. Each whale has a unique pattern and we can keep track of individuals throughout their lives and throughout their range whenever a photograph of them is collected and submitted to us. Over 40 years, so many things that we do have evolved and become more streamlined, especially with the, the use of computers, but our basic fieldwork approach to photograph individual right whales from a vessel continues to this day. So Philip was the next to join our team. Thanks, Ames. My name is Philip Hamilton. I joined the program back in 1987 seasonally and then was hired on full time in 1992. I'm interested in ray whale photo identification, in mother calf associations, and genetics. There were a number of exciting advances in the late 1980s when I joined. We began aerial surveys on the calving ground off of Florida and Georgia. We also started surveys out on Roseway Basin, which is southeast of Nova Scotia. And it's an area where we can see, back then we'd see groups of up to 40 right whales in a social group. And now groups of that size are, are pretty rare. We also began using some new tools to study right whales, including crossbows to get small pieces of skin for genetic analysis. And in an effort to find out where right whales go during the winter months, we helped other researchers attach satellite transmitters to the backs of right whales. It was a time of a lot of discovery and that sense of excitement that Amy described uh, continued into this time. Next to join the program was Marilyn. Thanks, Philip. I'm Marilyn Marks. I joined the aquarium in January, 1994 when I was hired to be an observer on their aerial surveys that were just starting up on the calving ground off Florida and Georgia. These surveys were known as the Early Warning System or EWS, and they were created in an effort to protect right whales from vessel strikes, because unfortunately, the calving ground is also home to three major shipping ports and two military bases. So there was, and still is, a lot of heavy vessel traffic down there. Our team flew on every good weather day from December through March, which is the right whale calving season. And when we sighted a right whale, we would notify ship operators in the area of their presence. For me, it was an exciting transition. I had spent the previous nine years only seeing whales from small boats. So those first aerial surveys, seeing right whales from high above was so wonderful. I loved the different perspective. I loved seeing the whole whale from head to flukes, watching how they moved through the water, the little calf tucked in close to mom. 
And the best part was being able to see a ship slow down or change course after receiving our report that there was a right whale in Epcot. It felt great to know we were helping to protect these vulnerable animals. The EWS surveys continue to this day, still protecting right whales on their calving ground. And now over to Heather, who joined the team next. Thanks, Marilyn. Hi, my name is Heather Pettis, and I began my journey with the right whale program in 1999 during the winter calving season. In the 1990s, prior to my arrival, right whale calving had declined and only one calf was born in the year that I joined the program. This decline was obviously of great concern to researchers and as a result, there was a concerted effort in the early 2000s to figure out what was behind the decrease in this reproduction. Since right whales are free ranging large whales, we needed to be creative and find ways in which we could assess right whale health outside of traditional veterinary sampling methods. In collaboration with other partner organizations, we developed two new non-invasive means of assessing right whale health, including the visual health assessment method and measuring hormones and feces that allowed us to uncover links between health and reproduction. Both of these methods, which we still employ today, have contributed significantly to our understanding of right whale health and its impacts on the species and have been fascinating projects to be a part of. The next to join the program was Monica. Thanks, Heather. Hi, everybody. I'm Monica Zani, and I started working with the Right Whale Program as a seasonal observer with the EWS Aerial Surveys in the cabin ground off the Georgia, Florida coast. I began in the season of 2000, and after three seasons, I became a full-time member with the team. What's really exciting is that I got to witness firsthand the transition from poor calving that was occurring in the late 90s to what quickly became a decade of a baby boom with higher than average calving numbers each year. Additionally, I got to witness a transition in the use of the Southeast U.S. habitat. In the 90s, mostly moms and calves were documented in the area, with the occasional sighting of other individuals. However, as the baby boom of the 2000s continued, we saw an increase in the overall number of whales utilizing the habitat. We documented previous year's moms returning to the habitat with their yearling calves. We noticed an uptick in the number of male and female juveniles utilizing the area. And we also documented an increased occurrence in surface active groups, or SADs. I also had the privilege of being part of another great transition for the Right World Program, the formal transition from slide film to digital photography in our field work. This took place in 2002 when we bought our first digital camera, a Nikon D1X. It was huge, it was heavy, it was expensive, and it was incredibly scary to hang out the window of a moving aircraft. However, as digital technology began to grow more popular among our catalog contributors. We, as the curators of the catalog, realized that the catalog also needed to transition to a digital format. That was no small feat, but by the summer of 2005, the development of Digits, a specialized digital image program specifically created for the Right Well catalog, was complete. Digits is still in use today. Next to join the team was Mariana. Hi, everyone. I'm Mariana Hagbloom, and in 2010, I joined the program as a volunteer and then an intern. I was then hired as a research technician, and I'm now in my current role as a research assistant. So in 2010, I interned for the Bay of Fundy field season, and unbeknownst to us at that time, it would be the peak of the population with about 500 individuals. After that, we started to witness a decline and this is due to human threats, specifically vessel strikes and entanglement in fishing gear. So in 2010, during that field season, I got to attend the necropsy of a right whale named Trident, who's pictured here. Um, and unfortunately, the results from the necropsy showed that this whale had died from drowning um, due to an entanglement. So his case and so many other cases like it inspired our researchers to start looking for more drastic solutions to the entanglement problem. Working with fishermen, engineers, and other researchers alike. And this work continues today and is a really important part of our program. So next to join the team was Kelsey. Hello, I'm Kelsey Howe and I joined the team in 2011 as a summer field intern and kept coming back every summer until I was hired full time in 2016. My foray into right whale research was right when everything started to change. The year prior to my arrival had seen the lowest number of right whales in decades in the Bay of Fundy, 
So folks were starting to wonder if something had shifted. But in 2011, the whales returned en masse, and I was lucky enough to experience a busy season in the bay before right whale presence began to fluctuate more dramatically and generally decrease. It has been both difficult and really interesting to straddle the drastic changes that have occurred over this past decade. We now know that these habitat shifts are due to a changing climate. As waters warm and their cold water food source shifts north, right whales need to adjust accordingly. This is actually really good news. It means that they are adapting to their changing environment, which is what we would hope to see. Next to join the program was Joanna. Thanks, Kelsey. Hi, I'm Johanna Anderson. I first joined the team in 2013 as an intern. My first few years in the program saw very low numbers of right whales in the Bay of Fundy. So by 2015, we started looking farther afield. Based on some historical data and various public sightings, we started sending exploratory teams to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, right as this habitat was emerging as a new hotspot. I was part of the first offshore cruise in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. We have returned there every summer since and have witnessed the increase in the use of that habitat, as well as the many deaths and entanglements that have occurred there in the last few summers. Next to join the project is Amy. Thanks, Johanna. I'm Amy Warren. I joined the team in 2019 as a research assistant. In the years prior, I had been doing aerial surveys in the calving grounds where our calf counts continued to be far below the average, including a zero calf year, and just generally less whales showing up in the calving grounds. This is when we ask the question again, where are the whales going? Thanks to more dedicated aerial and vessel surveys near the New York shipping lanes in recent years, we believe the waters off southern New England are becoming an increasingly popular place for right whales to forage. While this important new area has certainly filled in some gaps of missing whales, the current population at 356 North Atlantic right whales is much lower than it was just a decade ago. And last but certainly not least, I'll pass it off to Peter. Thanks, Amy. Good day. I'm Peter Corcoran and I'm a senior scientist. I joined the team very recently in October 2019 to lead the program after Scott Krause's retirement. Previously, I've worked on whales, dolphins, dugongs and seals with side projects on bats and wallabies in many places around the world from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Prior to moving to the whale team, I spent eight years running the whale research program at NOAA's Northeast Fisheries Science Centre at Woods Hole also mostly working on North Atlantic right whales. I had the interesting experience of moving into working on right whales just when the species numbers went into decline. I'm looking forward to all of us solving right whales problems and seeing them start increasing again. And now back to Amy Knowlton. Thanks, Peter. So that gives you a very quick introduction to our team and the long arc of this amazing program. We are doing a number of additional videos that go into more detail on some of the work we do so check out the aquarium's website to learn more. And thanks very much for your interest.